Okay. Now we are preparing for a very important theorem, probably the most important one in this chapter, which um, I mean after the interpolation, which allows us to see when a function given is in this space. For this, we need a proposition. Well, let me remind you of something. If you have a vector x in Cn, say x1 up to xn, and consider another one y1 up to yn, both of them in Cn, uh, pay attention to uh, y star x and x y star. Both are meaningful. And sometimes I need the first one, sometimes the second one. The first one, y star x, is a number because you do it in this order. And so it's just some i from one up to n x i y i bar. It's the inner product. It's another way to to write the inner product in C n. It's a matrix one by one matrix, which is uh, the result is the same as the inner product. However, the second one, x times y star. Is like this x1 up to xn and then y star up to yn is an n by n matrix. The, the first element is x y1 star, x1, x1, y2 star, and so on. And we continue. up to x n y n star. So it's an n by n matrix. Keep this in mind and now uh, our theorem uh, answers this question or uh, this criteria. A, ma a matrix P is given and we are wondering about range of P. If X is in CN, when X belongs to the range of P. I mean, up to here, what is your strategy if you face with this question? Well, we tell ourselves P is a matrix, range of P is the subspace created by the columns, good. So we form the columns and try to understand which space they create. And then try to see if the given X is in that linear combination. Straightforward pass gives the answer final and it's good. Now I give you another one which answers two questions indeed. Uh, one of them is when X is in the range of P and another one is related to, to the norm of a function, even though it is not clear in this uh, way that I write, but we'll see later on, it's the norm of a function. Here is a proposition. Let P bigger than or equal to zero, B and N by N matrix. And let X, X1 up to XN in CN. If here is the way it's written if, and indeed it's if and only if, but that, that's the way we use it. If uh, X 
x star. And you see by my comment about x, x star is an n by n matrix is less than or equal to CP. For some C bigger than or equal to zero. We know what it means. We know what it means A is less than or equal to B. It means that the difference is positive. Then, X is in range of P. This is what we want. That then answers the question. Moreover, there is one more thing. Uh, moreover. If X is equal to R times Y means being in the range, then the inner product of X and Y in CN is positive, bigger than or equal to zero, and also is controlled by C. The constant C that we have, we have about this constant C. The importance of this is not clear now, but we will see uh, why this is important and where we will use it. For the time being, just look at it as the answer to the question when X is in the range of P. X, X star, you have a criteria. You make this matrix, should be less than or equal to a multiple, a positive multiple of P. That's another occasion in the book that proof contains an inequality, which is important. It can be even uh, mentioned as, uh, as, as a lemma. But if we know this inequality, immediately we obtain uh, whatever we want. Proof. <clears throat> well, recall that uh, A is less than or equal to B. This means that for B minus A is positive, which is the same thing as A, Z, and Z is less than or equal to B, Z in a product Z for any Z in CN. That's the meaning of A being less than or equal to, to B. Therefore, here we want to show that X, X star is less than or equal to CP. Therefore, X, X star is less than or equal to CP if and only if what we have above X, X star as a matrix uh, act on Z, inner product on Z is less than or equal to CP, Z, Z. Uh, for all Z in C. And now it is easy to calculate the, the right side here. Right side, look, Z is the vector Z1 up to Zn. And if X is the vector X1 up to Xn, X, X star is the N by N matrix whose IJ element is Xi or I, Xi, Xj bar. And therefore we can we can calculate we can calculate x x star z 
that's uh, I mean easy to do. I mean, it's the what is the ice component here is to multiply the the ice row of x x star by the vector z. It's the sum x i x j bar z j j from one up to n. And the inner product of this with Z again. So if you do this X, X star Z and Z is the sum Z I part. True, it's just the ice component of the first vector times the conjugate of the ice component of the second vector, and then you sum. And now you see that you can uh, separate i from j, and this becomes sum i from one up to n x i z i bar times sum j from one up to n x j bar z j which is equal to sum i from one up to n x i z i bar squared and this is nothing but the inner product of x and z squared so in short if i compare this with I, what I have here, I conclude that x star, x x star less than or equal to CP, if and only if the inner product of x and z squared is less than or equal to C, P, Z, Z. That. That's the, the, the key which uh, gives us the answer. Because again, uh, we use the fact that when P is positive, then uh, at least P is equal to P star. So we can write C n as the range of P plus the nullity of, of P. This orthogonal decomposition says to us that X is in the range of P if and only if X is orthogonal to the null space of P. True. And so, uh, our, let, let's look at the, uh, the proposition again. In the proposition, this is our assumption. So we have this, therefore we have the inequality. The inequality holds uh, for any Z. So assume if Z is in the N of P, then P of Z is equal to zero. Therefore, in particular, P, Z, and Z is equal to zero. And the inequality implies that X and Z equal to zero by inequality. Which means that X is orthogonal to N of P. Therefore, X belongs to the range of P. 
it's, it's immediate if we just notice this equivalence. And this is not explicitly mentioned in the book, even though when you look carefully to the proof, it's there. It's, it's hidden in the proof. And uh, why, why do we have X inner product with Y? Because uh, you simply, for any Z, Cn x in a product with z squared is less than or equal to c t z and z or any z no restriction and suppose y is such that p of y is equal to x so here pick your put z equal to y What do we obtain? We obtain uh, x and y squared is equal to c, p, y, and y. Ah, oh, less than or equal, sorry. Which is equal to c, x, and y in a problem. C is already positive, so this shows that the inner product of X and Y, of course, is bigger than or equal to zero. And so the absolute value here is not needed. And if we divide both sides by X inner product with Y, we obtain X inner Y is less than or equal to C2. So we need this, as I said, it is not clear why, uh, it is not clear why X, Y inner product bigger than C less than or equal to, bigger than zero less than or equal to C is important, but uh, we will see later uh, where it comes into picture. Now we are prepared for the important theorem which I mentioned. Again, uh, this is the theorem that tells us uh, when a function is in this space. I mean, we can call it uh, controlled uh, finite interpolation. Let's see why it is called controlled finite interpolation. Uh, the setting as before, H is an RKHS on X. Uh, K it's kernel. And F, a function on X with values in C. Then the following are equivalent. What are the following? First one, F is in the space. Second, um, there exists a constant set C and zero such that for any finite x1, xn, subset of x, distinct. There is a function f, well, it's, it's called h here, doesn't matter. There is a function h in the space h, such that the norm is controlled, that is why it's called controlled. And uh, H at point XI is equal to F at point XI. See, this is the meaning of controlled finite interpolation. We interpolate for I uh, from one up to N, in other words, from X1 up to XN. 
So we are looking for a function in this space whose norm is controlled and it interpolates with values lambda i, which are equal to f of x, y. For any possible um, combinations of x1 up to x n, finite controlled interpolation. So finite control interpolation is, is possible. The uh, most important feature of part two is that C, the constant here does not depend on H. If you change your X1 up to Xn, C remains fixed, meaning of control. And three, the same thing as do, but in another language. Uh, there exists c bigger than or equal to zero, uh, such that c2 k x y minus f x x y. This is a function. It's a kernel function bigger than or equal to zero. We'll see that this is not something different, but the language is a bit uh, different. If, if I call this L, L of X, Y, L bigger than or equal to zero is the same thing as L is a kernel function. <clears throat> so moreover, we can say something about C. Of course, if uh, number two or number three uh, works for one C, then for any C bigger is also working. You can increase the C and still it works. So the natural question is that what is the minimum possible value for C in two or in three? And here is the answer moreover. If F is in H, then uh, absolute value of F, no, the, the normal F is the least C. Simple C uh, that satisfies or that works in two and three. We will see in the proof, the way uh, the proof will be given, that two and three work with C equal to the normal F. And then we will show that if two and three works for an arbitrary C, then there is a function F whose norm is less than this C. Therefore, uh, this statement will follow. True, that's a, that's a very precious theorem. Let's see how it works. Proof. Uh, uh, I will work one implies three. Uh, three implies two and two implies one. That's the way uh, I will prove it. So why one implies three? In other words, why F being in H2 implies that L is a kernel function. So let's uh, F be the set X1 up to Xn. And uh, in X arbitrary and alpha one to alpha n arbitrary scalars in C and put uh, G equal to alpha one K X one. Oh, that's that's plus. Plus alpha N K X. Then 
what can we say about uh, about the inner product of f and g f is the function which is already in h this is our assumption in one f is in h well on one hand on one hand f g inner product square by cauchy schwartz is less than or equal to normal f squared normal g squared and norm of G we have computed many, many times. It's less than, uh, it's, it's equal to uh, the sum over I and J, alpha I bar alpha J, K, X, I and X, J. I don't need this representation here, but if you recall, this is also equal to uh, k x i x j this matrix applied at alpha one up to alpha n inner product with alpha one up to, i don't need it here but this is equal to also equal to this so 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 what i need is, is this one is equal to this on the other hand what can I say about, uh, again, F in a product with G? On the other hand, F in a G is F sum I from one up to N alpha i k x i take the sum out f k x i and i know this is sum i from one up to n alpha i bar f at point x i therefore uh, if if i square it fg squared is uh, fg, or oh, I can write it here, fg times fg bar, and uh, one of them is sum. For this, I write j from one up to n alpha j. Which one is bar? Let me look at it now, alpha i bar. So I keep it with i here, not j. i from one up to an alpha i bar, f of x i. And for this one, I use j, alpha j, f of x j bar. And I put both together, it's sum i and j from one to n, alpha i bar, alpha j, f of x i, f of x j bar. This is precisely equal, and I know also that it's less than or equal to this combination. So I put them together. So that's the second one which I need. Therefore, I put them together as sum i j from one up to n alpha i bar alpha j f x i f x j bar is less than or equal alpha i bar alpha j k x i x j. And if I move F to the other side, this is equivalent to sum i j from one up to n, alpha i bar, alpha j bar, k. Oh, I forgot something important. 
I forgot something very important. I forgot this normal f squared. So here I forgot normal f squared. K x i x j minus f x i f x j. This is bigger than or equal to zero. This means that uh, this means that L of x y is equal to the norm of f square k x y minus f of x f of y bar is a kernel function. This is what I wanted to prove with c equal to the norm of f squared. That's why I said I will show that number two and number three works. Both of them work with uh, the constant c equal to the norm of f squared. So this is not something difficult. Uh, so this finishes one implies three. Now why three implies two? Uh, the same setting as before. What do we want to prove here? We want to prove that if L is positive, then we have controlled uh, finite interpolation. And in this case, we need of a preceding proposition. Uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's written here, here. For any, even, even this one is better. Even this one is better. Uh, L is bigger than or equal to zero. This means that this combination is positive for any alpha i and alpha j. And uh, what does this mean? This means that, I mean, sum L positive. This means that for any combination x1 to xn, the this sum uh, i and j from one up to n. For j norm of f squared k x i x j minus f x i f see why or yeah x j bar mm. What happened? Okay, very good. X i x j r. This is positive. What is going on? I don't know. So uh, the way I can write this, remember in, in previous theorem, previous proposition, we had this. If x, x star is less than or equal to Cp, this means that x is in the range of P. And also we had a control on an inner product. So uh, here, this means that the matrix, I want to write this in this form. This is equivalent to say that fx1, oops.
I don't understand. Why is it like this? Um, in the last 20 minutes, it wants to tease me. I don't know why. This is less than or equal to No. This is precisely the meaning of this. The sum of alpha i bar alpha j bracket, the whole thing inside bracket, bigger than or equal to zero means that the matrix whose ij coefficient is this one is a positive matrix and that can be written also in this format this is vector x this is vector x star if you do x x star you obtain the ij element here and this is the ij element of this matrix so the difference is positive, is precisely what is written here. Why I wrote it in this way? Because I want to use the previous uh, proposition. Now, x, x star is less than or equal to a constant times p. This means that f, x, one. Oh, come on. This is in the range of uh, our matrix G, I mean, this one. Sometimes I call it G in the book, sometimes they call it Q. And when we say it's in the range, it means that interpolation is possible. So, in, so this means that there is H in H such that h at point xi is equal to f at point xi. And uh, for any i equal to one up to f. And now it's the point that uh, you will understand why we had the, the inequality in the previous proposition. We had if, uh, if R of Y is equal to X, we had before, then inner product of X and Y is controlled by C, which is here the norm of F squared and positive. Now we will see why this is needed. This really bothers me and don't, I don't know why it's like that. H, if we consider H, which is of the minimum form, H has the form sum I from one to N alpha I K X I in H F. <clears throat> And then again, the formula that we had, we call that the norm of H squared is the matrix K X I
xj times the vector alpha n And this matrix plays the role of R, R times X, R times, here it is, I wrote it here, R times Y equals to X. <clears throat> Being in the range means that there is an alpha such that our matrix times alpha is equal to uh, what we are looking for. So this is equal to, and being positive not needed it's already we know but what we know uh, from previous proposition is then is less than or equal to C. And our C here is a specific C. So H squared is less than C equal to normal F squared in our case. Wow. This finishes uh, the part that three implies two and you see the role of that inequality that we had before the the role of this one it gives the the control that we need on h and now it remains to show that two implies one Two implies one, it means that if we can do the finite control interpolation, then there is a function which is in this space. So here, what is our assumption? Assumption is that for any f finite set, uh, there is a function h, which I call it h index f, uh, with two properties. The first one, norm is controlled. The second one, uh, it does the interpolation. HF of X is equal to F of X. Not for every uh, X, for X in the finite set F. And our goal is to go beyond this and show that uh, H is really equal to F. The general strategy is like this. Uh, if uh, we have, for example, one function which, go, which is true for uh, say one point, then we consider two points and two points, the set is bigger. So if it works for this and it works for this, then instead of considering this, we consider the function for that. And if it works for two points, it works also for three points. And so we increase the points, but somehow, somehow when uh, we increase our point, we should think about lim h of f for f. If we stay with, uh, with finite, with, uh, with uh, sequences, it doesn't work because X should be, can be big, like for example, the, the unit disk. And if we add one point at the time, at the end, we consider just a countable number of points. So we, we even do not arrive at our set. That's one problem. But if 
our set is also countable, still we need to take care of the limit. So why the limit in the general setting exists and uh, we have the convergence. That's the main point. And this is precisely where uh, we need the uh, limit of nets, not limit of sequences to, to go from finite number of the points to the whole space. Uh, please allow me to stop here. On one hand, we, we have just uh, three, four minutes. On the other hand, it, this pen, I mean, really makes me nervous. I don't know why it's not working properly. And if anything, I, I, I write it clean. So we try to, to see what's the problem for the next time. So next time I will uh, complete the proof of uh, two implies one, and this will finish our chapter. Chapter three will go chapter four. Thank you very much.